super fresh, super nice HB goodness. Hey guys, welcome to Rollage Biology. It is my part two of this live stream, which is a bit weird for me actually, because uh, it's only been two days since I've done a live stream, which is not like me. So, in today's uh, version of this, basically, I'm going to be continuing with that Valju 72, which still completely by utter surprise and shock, the amplitude on it's running really well, the watch is running good, so I'm super happy with it. I even had up to uh, 301 amplitude on it, which I thought was pretty fresh. So tonight I thought, well, there's, there's a few reasons behind this, so I will actually explain the truth. I wanted to basically get this uh, chronograph built because it's the Watch Expo on Sunday and I haven't shown this watch off yet, so I want to wear it. So there's that. And then the second reason as well, and more importantly, I was really not happy with the... Um, I'm not completely happy with the camera quality. So because it's in the EU, I have a certain amount of time where I can actually return this. So I'm going to return it. And I've already ordered a new camera, which has got a better Sony sensor on it. And what I also like about it, and I was uh, checking out some reviews, it's got an autofocus on it as well. So I think that will really, really make a big difference for me. So that's something that I'm really, uh, really looking forward to uh, basically working on. <sighs> so... I hope everybody's doing well and it's Friday night and everybody's super chilled. Like I said, this watch is completely rebuilt. So I'm, well, sorry, the timing part of it is completely rebuilt, which I'm super happy with. So it's only basically the chronograph side of it. So I expect that it should go pretty smooth. The other thing as well that I know about this watch is uh, the chronograph was running fine. So uh, there's been no messing around with the eccentric screws, which is really good. And I've certainly not touched them either when I've uh, removed everything. So I'm hoping that basically it's just going to be a case of just banging it all together and uh, away I go. So that will be fresh. So let's get on with it. <clears throat> get my tweezers. Standing a little bit of a uh, little bit of 1300 to this post. And then I can pop on the, uh, the wheel. And it's just friction fit, which is nice. And what I'm going to do as well is I will just give it a little tap with my uh, hand press. just to set it in motion for now, but then later on I will uh, adjust it properly. So a lot of people find chronos a bit daunting. and I must admit the first time I ever did it, I was a little bit like, whoa, it's a chronograph. It's a little bit daunting. But at the same time, you get used to them and it's like a puzzle at the end of the day. So this is going to go here where this brake is. I'm just going to add just a little bit of grease just where it's going to sit. And I can see a little tiny little bit of fluff just there that I want to get out of the way as well. And then I can remove this screw. And 
on he goes. And I can't screw him down yet because I've got to put on another um, the uh, the um, pusher lever. So what I will do is I'll just put this screw to one side <clears throat> and then continue with the assembly. Now there is a specific way of doing this, but I've also kind of got into the habit of doing it the way that I'm now used to. And I don't see that it really makes that much of a difference. But there is obviously a certain order of things, the way that things uh, have to go in. Especially with certain parts which live on top of each other, let's say. So this is the, uh, the column wheel, which obviously makes it a column wheel chronograph. I will just add a little bit of grease underneath because every time that he's moving, he's rubbing on the base of the plate. And then I will just add a smidge of 1300 just on the shoulder for where the screw's going to sit. And then I can pop him in. I don't know what it's like for you guys, but it's absolutely throwing it down here at the minute. So much rain, man. It's like a proper storm. So I apologize if there's any, uh, if you can hear it in the background. Because it's literally banging it down, man. Like literally banging it down. So now I'm going to put in this really long lever and he goes all the way over to the other side and connects into the column wheel. It's such a cool design this. And then I can put that original screw back in. Hey Eric. <laughs> Man, is this going to become the norm that every time that you watch one of my videos, I get 249? <laughs> I really appreciate that, man. And at the same time, I also remembered as well to get a beer. So I actually do have a beer at the moment as well, which is cool. And um, what else was I going to say? My mind's gone blank now. But the, the, well, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. The only thing I was going to say is, you know, with those super chats, I appreciate them and I think they're really nice, but I don't know if people actually know um, how a little bit shady um, YouTube is in regards to them. So, for example, that 249 that you just sent me, I will actually get one euro and two cents of that because YouTube basically take more than half, which I think is a bit scandalous because it's like a tip at the end of the day. I completely get it for like ad revenue and things like that. I think, yeah, of course, absolutely. That's fair enough, blah, blah, blah. But I think for um, uh, tipping, like as if you were in a restaurant or something like that, I think that should be 100% for, for the person who's uh, created the video, just my two cents, basically. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Man, it is a nice, um, nice movement. Where is my screen? Here you go. <coughs> I'm not sure if I'm getting the comments straight away. Let me check. But I was just saying as well that uh, I'm I'm really not happy with this uh, camera. So two reasons why I've done it. If, if you guys were not here at the beginning, I said 
The first reason is, is that I want to return this camera because I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with the, uh, the quality. And the second reason is I, I haven't worn this watch like as much as I want to and I want to, sh I want to wear it to the, there's a, a watch expo on Sunday. I don't know if you're going to that, Eric. Uh, and uh, I want to wear it. But I want to return this camera and I've got a certain amount of time before I can uh, return it. And I've already seen and ordered a new camera which has got a Sony sensor in it and it's got autofocus as well within a 10 centimeter range, which is obviously more than enough for watches. So I'm like, oh man, hell yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that. So I've already ordered that, but of course it's got to come from China. So that's going to obviously take a while. And um, yeah, I'm going to obviously have to wait for that to, uh, to come. But I thought if I get this chrono out of the way and then I can wait just for that to, uh, to come. And then at least I've done this video. Oh, bless. That's really kind of you, bro. Seriously, man. It's uh, mad, uh, mad appreciated. How's your Friday going anyway? Have you got the crazy storm like I've got at the moment? I'm not sure if I'm, because I've got my computer on in the background and I see a comment. Ah, it's from before. Now I see, now I understand. Just getting my parts together. this bridge okay I need a little oil on this as well I'm not directly above this camera, so I have it at a bit of an angle because I found that if I have it directly above, there's too much uh, light reflection. Uh, I'm doing good, by the way. Yes, I go to the Ricketick, but not for the watches most of the time. It's rubbish. Sometimes you find these nice tools. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I will see you there then because I'm definitely going. I've got a link up uh, with a guy first thing in the morning, so I'll get there really early because uh, he's got quite a few parts for me that I'm uh, going to collect off of him. So maybe we could uh, grab a coffee if you want. got this pivot all the way in yet but I just want to put a little screw 
in just to start with. And I can see it. There you go. <laughs> always man always have to watch out for those pivots I feel like I'm uh taking an exam with you, uh, with you watching me. <laughs> now I always like to put in like a little bit of thread, not obviously a full, uh, not fully tighten it up, just a little bit so that it's, that the bridge is not gonna move away. So with this, I need to, oh shit, I've put this on the fucking, see, this is the problem with live again. I've just realized I've put the bloody brake on first, which, have I or haven't I? Yeah, I put the brake on first. I think I need more alcohol. It was weird, I was saying to myself as well, I was like, oh, I'll put that on for that afterwards because this should go on first. And I'm like, no, it's bloody not, it's the other way. This. And with this. I just want to remove the spring just a little bit here. And they're a lot more flexible than you think. Just engage the teeth. This is a hell of a lot easier to do with a microscope directly above me because this way I'm struggling.
No, I've heard about it. I've got quite a lot of that 9010 left, so I've not uh, needed to replace it yet. But I've heard about that because obviously I get what you're meaning. Because then you're going to obviously have a full uh, view of uh, where it's going, so to speak. That's good. Where did you buy it from? That uh, luminous oil. Uh, Valjo 72, 100%. It is my absolute favorite uh, movement to work on. But obviously in the peace and quiet of my own um, world, uh, so to speak. I mean, obviously when it's in a live situation, I mean, it's, it's, it's different, man. You know, we talked about it. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's very different. But uh, I, I love it. I just, it's such a beautiful complication. It, it's like a working, a workhorse, like tank of a movement. Um, what else? Um, I like the, uh, how far it's come since then and other movements that have been based off of it and everything, you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, what can I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it literally is just my favorite one. I need to clean off this as well because this is far too much oil. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. Why? Why do you like that? Not the best condition uh, hammer this, but it is what it is. I'm a bit conscious as well because I've got a lot more of a view than what you guys have got. Oh, hey, Daryl. Didn't know, uh, I didn't know uh, that was you. Actually, I just glanced at it. How are you doing, man? I hope you're doing uh, well. What time is it over there for you? Is it, it must be still quite early in the afternoon, no?
Where's all my splings? <clears throat> Favorite movements to color the three one three five of Rolex, the AP three one twenty, and the twenty six three three zero of Patek. How many of those have you worked on? Come on, lad. There you go. <clears throat> hey Heath. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. I have my beer tonight. Mm. I wasn't going to make this mistake again. No, sir. Got me a nice Indian IPA. Mmm. Super fresh and super chilled and cold. Mm. <clears throat> I have to put in my favorite spring. Eric, I was saying, I checked that movement today. I gave it a little bit, I gave it a full wine. I got about 301, which I'm still actually baffled at. 301 amplitude, which is a bit bizarre. I have, I uh, don't know if you can see it. This one, it's an Indian. It says it's an, an India pale IPA. I don't drink a lot, but the other night I was really like, I don't know why, man. I was just like proper craving a beer and I had nothing. Like literally nothing in the house. And then today I thought, man, I'm not going to um, crave this again. I thought I need to, uh, I need to make sure that I uh, sort myself out, which I did. And I was quite happy with that. Okay, that's in. This one I have to be careful with because I can't put the screw uh, back in. 
actually goes in right towards the end because it's the uh, same screw that the switch uses. So I basically, uh, yeah, like I said, he cannot, uh, he cannot go in yet. <clears throat> Usually I start with the underside actually of the, um, of the movement, but for some reason I've done it the top, uh, the top way this time. I don't know why, no particular reason if I'm completely honest. Yeah, no, no particular reason. Okay, I want that, I want that, I want that, I don't 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 want that, and that maybe. I'm just going through my parts. <clears throat> okay, so I'll put on the uh, coupling, because this top part's nearly done actually. No, one thing one thing that I do think is a little bit of a flaw if you compare the Val 72 to like a 861 like a Lamania based one the coupling is uh, it's sealed you can't remove the wheel it's like all uh, riveted on so yeah to best of the to the best of my knowledge anyway so I like I will oil the underside of it but from a cleaning perspective, it's like, yeah, it's a sealed, uh, it's a sealed unit. So you can't, uh, yeah, what you call it, like uh, separated. But I know on the Omega you can. Uh, what have I lost my vision? And this looks like a screw that it's going on, but it's not. That's uh, one of the uh, eccentric screws. And I'm just going to put a dab of uh, oil on the shoulder of that screw as well, but you're probably not going to see me do it. So it's out of the camera because it moves a little bit. Come on. No, no Bud Light. And yeah, I did get it. I completely got it. Uh, it's a strange uh, world we're living in, man. I completely, 100% know exactly what you're talking about. And no, I'm sorry to say that I am not, um, I'm not celebrating my day 50 of womanhood. I'm still old beard, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. I'm all beard. So one thing that I need to do as well, which I'm not going to do just now, but I only lightly pressed on the uh, the wheel here, which is press 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 fit friction fit, so, because I need to have him leveled with the coupling, which I will I will do it later on basically. Because he's uh, he's connected, which is great, but he you probably don't see it on the camera, but he's a little higher than the the coupling one, so. It needs uh, it needs to sit completely uh, flush. But it's a two second uh, two second thing. I'm just adding a tiny bit of oil as well for when he stabs into the column wheel. And then I can put on his spring as well, which I'm gonna pre-grease.
and he goes here. These springs as well have, um, come on, it's jumping all over the place. Uh, underneath them, they also have uh, like little shoulders. So they make it uh, extra secure, basically. So you're not just relying on the screw. It's actually got a shoulder as well. Another rule of thumb as well with uh, watchmaking. If it doesn't feel right, then it's not right. And this, for some reason, just doesn't feel right when I'm trying to screw it in. And it's not like a super tense spring. It just felt like it had uh, jumped out a little bit. There you go, he's fine now. But I need to adjust him as well because he's going to stop the movement because there's too much uh, pressure. So I can continue, put these other springs on and then I'll finish the underside. So this one. <clears throat> Which will go here. And I can just slide him underneath. And again, what I do is I just, I put the screw in like maybe two turns because he's not in properly, but I just want to get a little bit of security. Whatever you do, don't fully screw it down. And then I can knock him into place. Well, there, I didn't even screw him down enough. But my point is, is that I can get him into place then without having to worry about this flying off anywhere. But I didn't screw him down enough. Okay, he's actually in. Well, he's, he's, he's pretty much in. I just need to adjust the uh, head of the spring. But the shoulders are in on the, uh, on the end of it. Just engage him. There we go. And engage on the... There you go. You see, and you see the movement fire back up again now. Hey, Ross. Nice to see you, man. Nice that you're here. It, yeah, it, it is a bit challenging. I don't think people realize sometimes. It's certainly something that I uh, didn't think about before. I mean, doing videos and everything that you pre-recorded and everything is fine because obviously there's this wonderful thing called edit. <laughs> and cut and paste and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, when it's live, so I'm kind of finding that I'm waffling on a bit. I think what would be nice is if there was some way that they would do it that I could actually uh, hear you guys because 
Yeah, I'm just in this. I'm in this room. It feels like I'm just in this room. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> but please tell me if you feel that the camera is out of focus because I'm only relying on this on a small monitor to view it. But so far, you guys are not bitching off about it, so I'm assuming it's okay. Okay, so the last main spring, which goes on the top here. And again, you can see that he needs to be pulled back. So again, what I do, I always put the screw in, make sure that the shoulders are in, and I will screw it in, not fully, just a little bit, just so that it's not going to fly away. And then I can pop this and engage it back. He's engaged. Now that I know he's all engaged, then I will screw him down fully. There you go. So the last thing that I'm going to do now for the top of this, because this is pretty much done now. Um, let me think about that before I say what I was going to do. I was going to put the switch on, but I'm a little bit conscious that he's not going to have enough room. No, you know what? I'll put the switch on afterwards. It's fine. We will go to the dial side of it now. So I'll use a different movement holder because this one is a lot nicer to use. And you can test the uh, chronograph uh, mechanics and everything with this. So it makes things a lot, uh, a lot easier. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I know you guys are saying, I'm, but I'm st still... Uh, well, like I said, I've already purchased that other camera anyway, so... Uh, and it's supposedly got a much better sensor on it. And also, I really like the idea that it has autofocus as well. Because uh, I think that will be a serious game changer, man. Because then, because I'm constantly looking at what I'm doing, but then I'm constantly looking over to the screen as well to make sure that this thing is in focus as well, you know? So I'm just putting on this little bridge and this is basically just to, yeah, it's just a, like a dial bridge just to keep the dial away. Just need to remember where the uh, screws are for this. And again, I'm on an angle. So I see one, I see two, there we go. Because yeah, if I have this completely like bird's eye view, you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, turn down the brightness, you know, because, because it's so shiny it will uh, reflect intensely off of the um, uh, the LED uh, ring light that's uh, underneath the microscope. Which, uh, yeah, it's a shame, but uh, it's, it's as what I was reading and then from other people that have, have got these, it's, it's the best thing to do because, uh, yeah, you just get too much, too much glare. So I'll just put this bridge in, which is, there he is. Again, I'll just put him in a little bit until I get the other screw in. Okay. Then also, before I forget, there's another huge screw which sits on top of the uh, setting lever and to be honest I think it's really its only purpose is again is because it's so huge I think its only purpose is again as a uh, for the dial because there's nothing else on this side that's uh, gonna have the dial resting if you know what I mean because you've got one on this side and you got, then you've got one on this side because then because because obviously it needs all this room underneath for the 12 hour chronograph which is basically going here so all the 12 hour chronograph parts are going to go here and all the way up to this area and then there's another bridge going across here as well so I think that's why there's this oversized screw which creates another bit of uh, a flat spot uh, for that basically yeah also, there are some little differences on the uh, Val 72s as well versions. For example, here where the 12-hour uh, runner goes, on some models, you have a little uh, friction spring which 
comes across here and on some you don't and this is one that doesn't have it so yeah some do some don't so then i think if some don't have it and there's no structural change in regards to the movement so to speak then what's the point of it why did why does some have it and, and some don't just getting all my parts organized in the way that i'm doing it this video is definitely not going to go on as long as the last one. I don't believe so. <laughs> There's my springs. There we go. So. Let me get my runner. And he lives just there. Hop. Done. Hmm. Also a bit of oil for the 12 hour as well. Pop on the pivot edge. Pop him in. And he will connect to the uh, mainspring. Sorry, uh, the uh, the barrel, uh, the mainspring barrel. And remember what I said as well. That's why it's it's important to have uh, because of some of the screws are quite different. So I leave screws in. Because then, of course, you're going to know where they are and where they need to go when you basically put the part back. I'll just leave that there. And I'll put him there. It's a bit of fluff from my bench. And I put this the wrong way around. To go there. I don't know why you guys want it live, especially with all the the little niggly mistakes. I've worked on this kind of movement so many times, and even still now, I will uh, niggle on it the wrong way sometimes. Thank you, Peter. I hope you're doing well. So what I was saying earlier, yeah, there's... See, because they have the hole for it here. There's a friction. There's like a little friction spring uh, that comes across here and it sits to keep this down. And then the other different version, it doesn't have a screw here. So whereas on this one, it has a screw here, but it doesn't have a friction spring. So they changed it at some point. And uh, yeah. I mean, they obviously had a reason for it. I don't know why they did, but they did it.
This one can be a little bit tricky sometimes because it has a friction spring on the top, but yours truly seems to have got it first time. Finally, some, uh, some real live goodness that actually went down first time. Sometimes this one can be a pain in the ass because of the strength of that, uh, that friction spring. No, uh, P what was I going to say, Peter, I've, I've seen it on both. That's the thing, like, unless, it, unless like you said, it's, it, you know, maybe, yeah, actually now I understand what you're referring to, yeah. So basically they just always kept it that way and then they just didn't leave it later, but they obviously kept the hole because that's how the plate was milled or whatever. Yeah, I get what you mean now. Okay, that's in. I need a little bit of 9010 on one side of my oiler just for the hammer and a tiny little bit as well. That was also too much, so clean off. There's nothing wrong with doing too much, just as long as you remember to take off. But less is obviously better. Slide him underneath. There you go. Okay, come to Papi. No, that's not where you want to be. You want to be asshole. My neighbor's downstairs is heavily coughing again. It always sounds like he has uh, the C word, the uh, pandemic word. Like seriously, it sounds bad and I don't even know if he smokes, but it sounds bad when he coughs and I hear it all the way through concrete flooring, you know, it's pretty intense, man. Like, damn. Okay, so the next thing I want to put on is this spring. which is held in by these two monster sized screws. This one literally just serves as a, as tension for it basically. And the reason I'm doing it now is because sometimes it can be difficult to find where this is supposed to go. So if you do it now, like here, Come here, screw. And I can see that he will sit like that and then the tension will be pulled up. Let me just double check one thing if it is the right way around. I always forget with this spring. No, it's the other way, it has to be the other way. Okay, so let's pop him in. No, I completely balls this up. This is completely wrong. He's in the wrong bloody hole. It's the hole further down. Come on, guys. You're supposed to be keeping an eye on me. 
I was looking at it and I'm thinking, this is wrong. Well, you wanted live, you got live. Yeah, that's perfect. So he will rest on that and then he has a bit more tension. But before I do that, I just want to add a little grease. That's why I do it this way around. I can just tap it just enough on without it smearing everywhere it shouldn't smear, basically. Which is perfect. And I don't even need to add that other screw just yet, because what I will do first is I will add in this bridge, which goes here. Like so. <laughs> did feel like a man I'm telling you if you do a live stream I will be there and I'll, I'll be there 100% with my notepad seriously doing it live is uh, it's very different man you feel like you're being, uh, well, you are. You've, I was going to say you feel like you're being observed, uh, and which is basically true. You are 100% being observed by all these dudes that could have something much better to do on a Friday night. But I do appreciate it. <laughs> Speaking of which, I also should have something better to do on a Friday night. But I love you guys, man. It's all for the cause. All for the cause. Right, so now I can put in this tension one. So I'll just push the spring back just a little bit so that I can get the screw in. And then I'll just nip him up a little bit with completely the wrong size screwdriver because the one I want to use is I'm holding it in my left hand. Okay, there you go. And He's not going to engage properly yet because I don't have a spring on. So let's finish that first. Nearly there actually, guys. Seriously, I think there's only about three parts to put on. Now this spring, I always need to remember which way around it goes and I think it's that way. Oops, my alarm. So I have to have an alarm on my phone two times a day. Because I have a cat and the, the thing is diabetic. He's old and stinky. So I have to inject him twice a day, which is a pain in the ass. Not because he's a problem in regards to it. It's not that. It's just it's a problem that for me remembering all of the time. But he's 15 years old, so he's, uh, he's knocking on a bit, bless him. Okay, as far as I can see, that's everything there. So if I put the switch on the other side, we hopefully will have a running chronograph Otherwise, I've completely made a tits up of it and done something wrong. You are <laughs> Tell me about it. That's why I have beer. Damn, damn good beer too. Mmm, 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 mmm.
Okay, the last bit of the magic. And I hope this thing fires up. Well, I mean, the watch is running, but you know what I mean. Okay, well, I'm already seeing the chrono running down the middle. Just turn it over this way first. We have got movement. Oh, come on, man. Enough's enough. You can't keep on giving me money. I might appreciate it. Of course I do. It's really generous, man. There's the reset. And if I just... The other thing with these, because they're free once the... Uh, it's not on. And I can test just to see if it is going to jump back to 12. Which it does. That's pretty good. So then let's see here. So it's not not uh, what you call it not not running yet. But if I engage it, I have to be a bit careful because this uh, movement holder is better on. Uh, it's not really for this side, so I just have to be careful. And there we go. Let's wait a little minute while I drink a beer, and let's see if the uh, minute counter goes over after a minute, which it also should do if I focus in. Did I stop it? Has it stopped running or what? Did I stop it? Oh, I know what it is. I need to... Um, shit, I need to adjust that eccentric wheel. Hang on a second. I'm just going to do this on uh, with a loop just to push um, this wheel. Just bear with me. That looks good. Okay, let's try again. I hope I don't have to mess around with the eccentric screws, but I shouldn't. In theory, I really shouldn't because I've not touched them. And if you don't touch them, there shouldn't be a problem if there was no problem before. And I know there wasn't a problem before. The chronograph, uh, yeah, it ran, it reset, all of that goodness. So I just want to see if it, if it will uh, change over here, if it will flick after a minute. Which I believe it should. And now this is also engaging more better because it was too high because I'd not fully engaged it basically it was not pressed on there you go I think you guys saw that it snapped over which is super fresh happy about that and 
And then if I reset it as well, again, being careful, but I will use it from the top here rather than the bottom. Yeah. You guys want me to put the dial on or what? Are you uh, you happy with this? Because the movement's been built, man. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I need to test the chronograph and everything over a longer period of time. But I don't need, I don't expect you poor guys to uh, hang around for that. But uh, we have got movement. Movement. I'll put the dial on if you want. I mean, what time is it? I mean, we only, only be, I've only been going an hour. I expect it uh, to be longer, but it's not been a problem. So I mean, it's uh, it's it's flowed. Little thirteen hundred here, and then I can put on the hour wheel. He's fine. And the dial washer. First, to zoom in on the palette fork escapement and the balance wheel before you go. I mu you must feed a fetishes. Yeah, I will do. I'll put the dial on. I will. I'll put the dial on. Let's at least do that. This dial washer is not clean. There's a little bit of fluff on that. I'm not happy about that. I don't do fluff. Not the best condition dial washer either. But it is what it is. Uh, dial, I need to, first of all, I need to unscrew uh, I think those dial feed screws are fully maxed out on the other side. Let me just have a check. Uh, where are you? I cannot see, can't see. can do as well is I can really zoom in you can really see how it's supposed to be whereas this is still blocking it so if I just move that like so and that one's already out man it can zoom in really well this uh, scope Wait, just for just for Eric, let's give him uh, let's give him some juice. There you go, bro. All right, that's your lot. <laughs> Where's that dial? Man, this dial is sexy. Seriously, this dial is so sexy. Juicy dial, juicy dial. Mm. Again, I'm a bit of a dodgy angle here. Cannot see. Mm. 
No, it's really hard. I can't see from this angle. I'm going to have to do it from here. Right? Yeah, that's right. Virtually in. I'll put it on a different um, movement holder. Where did I put the other one? I was just using it. I had a nightmare with a uh, Sherpa Ops today that somebody sent to me. Bloody hell, man. So he said to me, oh, the, uh, the bezel is not uh, really turning. He says, uh, I think it needs, uh, it needs adjusting and everything. I said, he's, uh, and he says, I'll oh, just uh, service it. I was like, yeah, it's no problem, man. Um, and as soon as I took the, uh, the movement out, I could see directly that the, uh, what you call it, the, um, uh, the gear crank was not an Enica gear crank. So my first thought was, well, okay, it's not really a big problem. Like I will just whip it out and then I will just replace it with uh, an original one, you know, simple, because they're just, to people that don't know, I mean, if you imagine like a winding stem, it's pretty much the same principle, yeah? There's nothing really special about it. But, I could not get this uh, out for the life of me, man. Like, I ain't messing around, I could not get it out for the life of me. So I was thinking, huh, what is this going on? So then I thought, okay, so worst case scenario, what I will do, I will, um, that needs a little bit more. I thought, worst case scenario, I will basically just uh, cut the end of this crank off, like completely cut it off. And if I can do that, then I will just slide it out through the tube. And, um, and then that's it, you know. So I cut the end of the crank off and then I basically slid it out of the tube. And then I thought, right, now I can put it like in like some grips and then I can just twist off the, uh, the crown, you know, simples. No, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It would not... Uh, it would not come off. Seriously. I tried heat, I tried everything. And then in the end, when I finally did get it off, there was no threads on this whatsoever. It, it was like a tube into the crown. I, I've never seen anything like it, man. Not normal. Not normal at all. Oh yeah, but this is a hell of a lovely dial, man. Seriously. I have been after a white aquagraph for a very long time. And this dial is in pretty good nick, considering. So I don't exactly know how I'm gonna do this uh, with this scope for you guys. I don't know if I can do it. I'll have a pop, but if it's gonna basically be not beneficial then you know, I don't see the point but I have all my hands all new as well because I bought new hands for it oh it's so juicy so juicy I prefer to use my Horotech for this, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, guys, I'm going to do the hands uh, off camera. It's my own watch and you've seen it done a million times before with the hands and it's going to be too difficult. I can't do it under the microscope because I need to use this, which as you can see, you can't see. So I don't think it's going to really work. But uh, yeah, guys, I super appreciate uh, for everybody that joined the stream and that we rebuild a chronograph. Even though the first one took, you know, I worked it out. I was looking back and um, the whole video was an hour and 40 minutes long. And that mainspring, I think, took around 40, 45 minutes. But I didn't edit it. I thought, no, I won't. I'll leave it. I didn't edit it. I left it. But uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. But that's how it can be sometimes. So, yeah. Mm. Damn, this beer is so good, guys. You need to get some of this. Oh, dear. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call it a night. It's 20 past 10 for me. So now we're 20 minutes. I think it's good. We got ourselves a working chronograph, which I'm happy about. I mean, I did think it would work, but uh, definitely needed a service. I'm super happy with the amplitude, which still baffles me. Um, obviously, the amplitude will be a little bit less when the chrono's running, because there's, there's more, obviously, going on. But um, yeah, I uh, super appreciate obviously everybody joining. Guys, I will, uh, of course, this will be available, um, what you call it, on the channel. So it doesn't get deleted or anything like this. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if people who haven't watched it, uh, you know, they can watch it again or whatever, if they want to use it as a reference point, so a reference point or something. So that's cool. And then obviously I'm really looking forward to getting that new camera as well with the autofocus. And I, I do, I think it will just be a hell of a lot better than this. I mean, you guys have said, oh, it looks okay, it looks okay. But no, man, I'm, uh, I think it could look a lot better. All right, guys, have an amazing weekend. Super appreciate everybody who joined. Uh, thanks, Eric, for the super chat. You don't have to do that, but I'm obviously, uh, from my heart, I'm super appreciated. Thanks, mate. And uh, guys, as always, until next time.